We always bear the burden of history that future generations will come to learn. If we worry too much about what we'll, what will be, we'll lose sight of the things that we have now. Wow, Patrick. That was beautiful. What? I was just reading this candy wrapper, see? Hello, Indian and everybody. This is Lynn and Otter, back here to do another episode of One Last Night. Uh, not too much to say, just gonna get right into it. We left off last time after having a, um, interesting, uh, conversation about who the main character is. Sorry if you can hear the fan a little bit on my laptop. It is, um, cooling my laptop down. I'm just gonna have it for a little bit, uh, just cause I don't want my laptop to overheat. But, uh, I'm gonna turn it off in, in, in a minute, so don't worry too much about that. Let's, let's get going. Alrighty. <clears throat> this time. I broke the silence between us first to start up a conversation to get to know him better. So, what's up? Nice weather we're having, huh? He shot me a glare as I mocked him for how we started our talk yesterday. Is this you trying to score more points over me, or did you actually want to talk? Why not both? Por que no los dos? The bat rolled his eyes. Good luck with that, old man. Hey, I don't need luck if I'm a natural. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my laptop back cooling pan down. There we go. Ah, I'm just hitting everything. I'm so unprepared. Ill prepared for a journey. I usually have um usually have it on while I'm editing, but I, I forgot to turn it on when I was while I was editing a previous episode of something else. Alrighty. Natural. Oh my gosh. Hold on, I gotta read that in its entirety. I don't need luck if I'm a natural. Naturally balding me. <laughs> okay, hold on. <clears throat> I don't need luck if I'm a natural. <laughs> Naturally balding, maybe. Ouch. What was that? So, what's on your mind? <laughs> oh, little prick. I was hoping to get to know you better, actually. I spent a little while talking about me yesterday, but I'm curious to hear more about my favorite Bunker Bat Boy. Aren't I your only Bunker Bat Boy? Wow, that's a mouthful. Bunker Bat Boy's bare rarity, but blink or babble bemusedly and you'll- Wow, uh, what? Bunker Bat Boy's bare rarity, but blink or babble bemusedly and you'll be behind. Huh? You said it was a mouthful. <laughs> I just wanted to make it an even bigger one. Another eye roll as I brought things back on track. Uh, my point being that I know there are a few sensitive areas, so I figured I'd let you guide your way through things. I'd love to, but I think it would help to have a more specific guideline than just you. I took a moment to recall my personal guide on getting to know someone. I'd, I'd had to do it plenty in the last year, so I'd grown accustomed to it. Oops, hold on, let me... Um... Forgetting to set my timers. Mm -hmm. Internet friends and the bunker were things I knew I was better off avoiding for the moment, but I could touch on his personal details. How about hobbies? Everyone seems to have a few of those lying around. Well, I spent a lot of time studying and learning, honestly. There's all kinds of things you can read about. It's how I learned Morse code in the first place. I have read a lot about history, seeing how those ancient civilizations evolved into modern society. Evolution in particular always caught my eye. Why could some species adapt to walk upright and speak all kinds of languages, while others seem to stay stagnant in the process? There's all sorts of theories regarding it, and unfortunate few mentioning eugenics, but tying it into history, there's even more interesting aspects. Ancient ruins had drawings of the process that made people walk upright. It's possible they knew how we started, but since we can't properly decipher their languages, the origins are lost to time. Even still, that which has survived had, well, that which has survived and been decoded could be chalked up to just nonsense due to lack of technology. Then if you put different religions into play, you get countless new perspectives. Every idea comes from somewhere, right? Who knows the sorts of things that were lost due to the centuries that have passed? We're currently living in an, living an event that will be considered a huge part of history. Our names could be passed down for generations. Do you think that's a good thing? Why wouldn't it be? You just said our names could be passed down, meaning that everything we do in the moment has a significant weight to it. 
Our stories could be told, but who's to say ours will be on the right side of history? I think it would be hard to be on the wrong side if we're just trying to survive. Besides, the same could be said before all this happened. We always bear the burden of history that future generations will come to learn. If we worry too much about what we'll, what will be, we'll lose sight of the things that we have now. I nodded to Xavier's point. Even if the talk so far hadn't been much about him, I already was beginning to understand him better. Seriously, the guy's a brainiac with all his big words. <laughs> wow, Patrick. That was beautiful. What? I was just reading this candy wrapper, see? So he's a well-educated man. Who, sa who says homeschooling doesn't work? He may have been a bit dense socially, but when it came to other things, he was a well of knowledge. Nicely put, kid. <laughs> Thank you. Other than that sort of stuff, though, most obviously I looked up. I look up. I took up archery. Most obviously, I took up archery. What about it drew your interest? Honestly, <clears throat> not much at first. My parents told me I had to choose some method of defense in my early teens. Most most of it was close combat stuff, but I preferred to learn something that would wouldn't cover me in bruises. Hence, archery. But why make you learn one at all? Most parents would rather have their kid take up a sport with a ball. Wish I knew. They never really explained it to me. Just like that, I was left with more questions about the bat's history. At least it came in handy. If I can ask, were they the the end is nigh type of people? Not that I saw. They are the overprotective kind, but I don't think they're the doomsday prep type. Then why did they have a bunker? For storage. They told me it came with a house as an added feature. I was still... I was still suspicious, but I sensed I sensed pressing him any further would make things uncomfortable. While on the topic, uh, what part of the city did you live in? We lived on the outskirts past the suburbs. You know, those scattered houses you see when driving out of town? That was us. I visited the city every so often with my parents, but for the most part, I was just out there with not many people to talk to. Hmm, must have been tough. I've lived my whole life in the more urban area, so I've grown used to always being around people even if I preferred to be on my own at times. That's one of the reasons I enjoyed Haven. Having people around me again was incredible. I never really imagined my future to be as a leader or mentor, but here we are. I've just set you on a different path sometimes. Did you have a dream job beforehand? I was still trying to figure myself out. Everyone expects you to have your entire life planned out by the time you're leaving high school. If things were that simple, I'm sure less people would be in debt with degrees they never wanted. How about you? A pilot? Really? Absolutely. I spent so much time on the internet just looking at so many different landscapes and cities, I wanted to travel to see them all. Being a pilot would also let me take people with that wanderlust to set destinations, so it's a win-win. I studied everything I could online about flying. Manuals, airplane schematics, wind patterns, and so much more. I even had a flight simulator installed so I could practice. I smiled at the bat, both from the confidence and joy in his voice and the humor of a bat who can't fly, normally taking to the skies in a different way. Who oh, can't fly normally, taking to the skies in a different way. It was also symbolic in a sense. That sheltered childhood leading to a craving of freedom and exploration. Something that could be found in a something that could be found in pilotry. Sounds like the perfect job sounds like a perfect job for you, kid. Thanks. I thought so too. We'd both been so distracted in conversation, neither of us noticed a path coming to an end nearby. Oh, we're here. There was a shift in the atmosphere as Xavier prepared himself to see the suburbs up close, the anxiety building up. I considered suggesting we take a moment if you need it, but Xavier's gaze was firmly set forward as we strode towards the, the ruins. Wow, we finally see his pants. The houses were what first popped into view. Windows shattered and lawns overgrown. A few of the roofs had caved, uh, have caved, had caved sunlight streaming down upon whatever lay within. The greenery on, greenery on the lawns had spread viciously, creeping up along the walls and streetlights, pushing its way out from wherever it could. I wonder where this is from. Someone mentioned AI art being used in visual novels. This looks like it could be that. It, it kind of works, I won't lie. It kind of adds to that eerie feeling of just kind of unintelligible destruction and, you know, overgrowth. The pavement in particular it thrived in, lurking out of the many cracks scattered underfoot as if desperate to reach the sun. Cars had begun rusting from where they lay in driveways, some lucky to remain intact compared to others. 
The unlucky had crashed into each other, or whatever unfortunate ob object stood in their way, ash still charring their hoods. Had it not been for the thriving flora, the scene was overall miserable. It was hard to stare at the remnants of what was once your present, now cast away to the past. Xavier kept a neutral face on, observing it all. It definitely wasn't easy, but he seemed to be taking it in stride. So, uh, which way are we headed? I jerked my head to the right. The base is up north. Uh, trust me when I say you'll know it when you see it. Uh, let's go then, old man. No time like the present and all that. Xavier strode forward confidently, wasting no time moving ahead. I picked up a light jog to catch up with him. I admire the I admire the enthusiasm, kid, but we need to be cautious. The outskirts may be safer, but it's still dangerous out here. All the more reason to reach Haven faster. Yeah, I want to see Haven too. If we rush and make mistakes, though, it'll only cause more trouble than it's worth. Oh, what the heck? I continued before the bat could interject. This is a new art. We'll get there in due time, Xavier. Impatience will only be our downfall. For the moment, just take in everything as take everything in as we go. All right. He looked as if he was about to try and rebuke that, but paused and took a deep breath instead. Interesting. You're right. You're right. Patience is a virtue, as they say. I nudged him in the shoulder. Look at you. You're starting to sound like me. I was wondering why I felt extra wrinkly this morning. Oh, jeez. Ha <laughs> ha. Very funny. We continued our banter as we walked further into the suburbs and away from the trails where our journey started. Oh boy. The more distance we put between ourselves and the outskirts, the less overgrown things became. Although the pavement was still riddled with cracks, it was somewhat easier to walk on. Our conversation had died, a while, died down a while ago as we took in the sights. It never got easier to know these were the same streets we'd walked before. What was once vibrant with society, the sounds of cars driving, children laughing as they played, people chatting as they walked, was now unbearable silence. The absence of city noise was eerie, the whistle of the wind blowing through hollow, sh hollow shells of homes taking up its place. We were starting to merge closer to the urban areas as shopping centers and apartment buildings began to pop up more frequently. In particular, there were a few short storefronts nearby, a convenience store, a nail salon, and some kind of law, law office, and an antique shop where we're all lined up in a row. The rest of the shops had been crushed by a falling apartment building, but the separated parking garage that once accompanied it seemed mostly intact. It was exactly the area I intended to bring us for our next pit stop. Okay, kid, let's pause a moment. Sure thing, whatever you say, Dorian. <laughs> Just gonna save. The bat had seemingly zoned out as he snapped her attention at my words, taking a few moments to process them and respond. <laughs> Back here out on you already? Following his lead from prior conversations, I continued as, as though he never said anything. Uh, this seems like a good area to start our final stop before Haven. What are we doing now? Another lesson. What do you see around us? Xavier took a moment to look around. Ruined buildings, like all the others we've passed. And why would we stop in this area specifically? I could practically hear the gears in his head turning. Oh. Oh. I know. <laughs> Say it then. Say it. <laughs> Out loud. <laughs> Say it. Out loud. Say it. We're here to get our nails done. <laughs> exactly. Wait, what? They've got to have polish at the salon, and we can loot it for some of, some of the colors. And I used to practice on myself when I was home alone sometimes with my mom's supplies. That Wait, is he not joking? <laughs> that way, when I had a friend to do it with, I'd be ready. Now I think the nice light blue... Now I think... Oh, now I think a, a nice light blue periwinkle would match the red of your flannel. Meanwhile, a royal purple would work best for me. Joking, right? Oh, <laughs> of course, of course I am. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, you have Obviously, I'd go with pink, just like my scarf. I've always wanted to bond with someone like this, and we can still treat it as a lesson if you want. <laughs> Is this a scarf? This whole time, I thought it was more of his like 
sure. I haven't been including it in my drawings of, of Xavier. I'll have to keep that in mind. <laughs> he was so close to connecting the dots, yet had fallen so far from the purpose of the question, it was almost impressive. Wait, is he... Is, so he's not joking. Wait, what? <laughs> How could Xavier be so smart and mature at times, yet so dense when it came to seeing the point? <laughs> no, Xavier. You're, you were on the right track, though. Oh. Then why? We're here to scavenge. While we, can't, while we can get supplies from Haven, this will serve as a good teaching moment. It'll help in the future, like on supply runs, for example. Not letting the opportunity escape him, Xavier brought his gaze to mine. So, we can still get nail polish? <laughs> oh my god. I sighed. If they, have any leftover bo if they have any leftover bottles, sure. Sweet. Teach me the way of the scavenger then, mentor. He gave me an overly exaggerated bow to accentuate, accentu ex accentuate the, his point. We'll start in the most obvious place to look for resources, the convenience store. By now, though, it'll likely have been thoroughly looted. Still, it never hurts to check because if we do find something there, it would make things awfully convenient and awfully green, apparently. I enjoyed the unamused groan. Oh, I see. <laughs> I get it now. Convenience store. All right. I enjoyed the unamused groan I got in response to my pun as we approached the store. The pavement underfoot began to crunch as we as we stepped on shattered remains of the big windows. I got a better look as we entered and saw that the inside had pr been pretty much what I was expecting. All freezer doors had been smashed and left more glass amongst the debris on the ground. The shelves were top toppled and bearing nothing but empty bags. Empty food bags, lottery tickets, receipt papers, and other miscellaneous garbage were strewn about. I called this le I called this a lesson, but in the end, it's more like common sense. I can provide a few tips, but you should always rely on your instincts. For example, it's important that we leave no stone unturned. It's 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 possible a can might have rolled under a shelf or over behind some pieces of broken ceiling tile. Got it. With the bare minimum said, the two of us began our search of the store. Xavier started by the shelves, checking to make sure everything there was truly empty. I went behind the counter, brushing aside the lottery tickets and empty cigarette packs that covered the area. Were things really this cheap? I peeked my head up, confused by the bad statement. What do you mean? It's just that the prices seem lower than I remember from when I accompanied my parents to go shopping. I moved my, from my position and over to where my companion is to see what prices he's looking at. Sure enough, the cost is what you the cost is what you the cost is what you'd usually find in this type of place, slightly more expensive than a normal store, so they can turn a profit. I'm not sure where you were taken to shop, but it must have been some kind of scam place. <laughs> These are the prices you'll find at most corner stores. Regular ones have them much have them even cheaper. Huh. I guess my life must have been a bit more pampered than I realized. I continued to search as we talked. What did your parents do for a living, then? Uh, they always said they were janitors. Huh. Hate to, hate to break it to you, kid. But no janitorial job pays well enough for that. They had to lie about their work or they had some other side business going. They might have insist invested some in the stock market or something. Uh, that tended to fluctuate a lot, though. And I'm sure there would have been a lot more yelling over lost money if that was the case. Besides, that's not a thing you'd really be ashamed of. Unless they invested in cryptocurrency or NFTs. If the apocalypse, ha if the apocalypse hadn't ended things, the environmental damage from those sure would have. <laughs> we both gave a chuckle as our search of the story came to a close. We'd even check the back end, as most clerks would say, there was nothing extra in stock there. <laughs> I just thought about a funny, um, I don't know if it was a TikTok or a YouTube short. This guy that used to do ha do a bunch of, like, Costco things. It was pretty funny. Can you just check in the back? Can you just accept we don't have it? The back ain't some magical place. What do you think is back there, Santa's workshop? The only thing back there is a clipboard with our schedules and some brownies Darcy brought in. The other three stores yielded similar results. I was lucky to find a mostly undamaged notebook in the law office, and Xavier found a few different polishes at the salon. I had been hoping to find something cool at the antique store, but half of it was also crushed by the building, and the front only offered some broken lamps. Yeah, it's too bad about this place, but one store at antiques has now become an antique itself. Xavier snorted. <laughs> really? That's your thought process? What's so wrong with it? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just didn't realize you had a side job as a poet. I don't. Wisdom, however, comes with my role as mentor. 
All right. And what wise words do you have about our journey so far? Let us follow this tale as it begins to unfold, lest it be lost to time and memories. Where'd you steal that line from? I came up with it myself. The unamused look on his face meant he clearly didn't believe me. Okay, fine. It was part of the opening to some fantasy game I played a while back. No idea why that part specifically specifically stuck with me, but it did. Oh, I wonder what that one is. I wonder what that was. It certainly came in handy here. That does seem like the introduction to a story. Now who's the one seeing a narrative in life? Still you. If you're not indulged, I'm sure you'll get cranky. I rolled my eyes at the bat. Back to my original point, though. I was almost hoping I'd find a typewriter here. I've always wanted one. Since I can't type online anymore, it would have been a good substitute. I think, oh, jeez. Scared me. I think there's a chance we'll find, it out, find one out here. If we can survive the end of the world, what's to say a simple old machine can't, too? And we'll have to save anything else on that journey till next time. Alright, well, that was kind of fun. We finally got out of the, the woods. We're into the uh, convenience store shopping phase. I wonder if some, we're going to run into some bandits or something before we get to Haven. We're, we're so close. I really want to see what Haven is, what it's all about. And I want to have an excuse to use a thumbnail <laughs> with Haven in it. So uh, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you, you know, hope you guys are having a, have had a good day or will have a good evening, night, you know, whatever. Uh, be on the lookout for some other videos I'm, I'll be uploading uh, soon, probably all to this channel. Take care until next time. And bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>